Hello and welcome to our parish gift short on Advent. My name is Connor and I am one of the youth ministry workers here at Living Youth. Thank you very much for joining us tonight as we continue on our parish gift shorts series. Parish gift shorts are a series of short videos which are for those meant to start parish gift this year but have been unable to. However, as this video is online, it is accessible to everyone, so you are all very welcome. Each week we have a different theme, and this week's theme is Advent. We will come back to our theme later in the video, but firstly, Shannon is going to lead us in our parish gift opening prayer. Help me to love. Hello, and thanks for joining us tonight. We begin by blessing ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh my God, help me to love you with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Help me to love you above all else, all created things here on earth, including my possessions and achievements, my pleasures and enjoyments. Help me understand who you are and to draw closer to you in love, in my thoughts and in prayer. Help me to look to you and to seek your love every day, and particularly in times of trouble. Light in me the pure flame of your love and give me the strength and courage to help your light shine on others. Amen. Now we're going to listen to Father Raymond reading out our Gospel and Reflection. The Gospel for this video is Mark chapter 13. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on your guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man travelling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task. And he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cockcrow, dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The start of Advent is the time I miss St. Patrick's College Maynooth the most. It was my home for four years as I prepared for priesthood and full of happy memories. And one of those memories was an ancient college tradition. In the early hours of the first Sunday of Advent, about 4 a.m., members of the college choir would meet at the grave of music professor Barungay in the college cemetery. There, we would sing his setting of one of the famous O Antiphons, which translated from the Latin reads, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, convert to the Lord your God. Then we would tour the college corridors, repeating the chant in four-part harmony. And as the other seminarians and resident priests heard the singing, they would get up out of their beds, light a small candle, and place it in their bedroom window. After just over an hour, the whole college would be transformed from total darkness into a sea of little lights, each a prayer, and symbolising a personal commitment to welcome Christ, light of the world, into their lives at the beginning of a new church year. It was magical and mystical, and set the tone for the weeks ahead coming up to Christmas. That Maynooth Advent tradition echoes the call of Jesus to stay awake. We hear that call four times in our Gospel. It is indeed one of the key challenges of Advent, as we prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ, the long-awaited Messiah. The beginning of another church year is a good time for a wake-up call, and to make some New Year resolutions. To think about how we live, and how we love, and to make the most of every day. These are questions many have been asking over the recent months in the face of our global pandemic. And they point to an opportunity to change and to begin again. If we can take advantage of that opportunity, then I believe we all can make a difference. So let's use this time of Advent 
to be wise, to light a candle in the midst of the darkness. The countdown to Christmas has begun, so be careful not to sleep in. Stay awake and make this Advent the time of our lives. Thank you, Father Raymond, for that wonderful reflection. And we are now going to circle back to our theme of Advent. When we hear the word Advent, we think of many different things. The colour purple representing preparation, cribs in our churches and in our homes, and the beginning of a new liturgical year. Advent can be divided into two parts. The first, the coming of Christ at Christmas. And the second, our waiting and preparation for the coming of Christ, which we hear about in our gospel. Keep awake, keep alert, for we do not know when Christ is coming. Many of us are familiar with Advent wreaths, which we see in our churches. The Advent wreath is an ancient symbol for our journey towards Christmas. The wreath's circular shape represents God's eternal loving presence, which has no beginning or end. And the evergreen leaves, which never fade in colour, signify God's ongoing love and support. The four candles of purple and pink represent hope, peace, joy and love, while the white candle in the centre represents the light of Christ, and this is lit on Christmas Day. The first candle on the Advent wreath represents hope. For many of us, 2020 has been a very challenging year, and this Christmas may look a lot different for all of us. In every day in life, and especially now, we are all looking for signs of hope. Although Christmas may be different, recently we have heard of a new vaccine which has gone through all the clinical tests and is now being made available. This vaccine isn't going to put things back to normal overnight, but it is a huge step in the right direction. This is a huge sign of hope for all the world. The longing for signs of hope was felt many years before Jesus was born. We read in Old Testament scriptures how people spent times worrying and how their faith in God provided stability. We read in Isaiah chapter 9 For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. They listened to God's voice and this brought them comfort. This hope of the coming of the Prince of Peace was a stabilising factor in their faith of God as they waited for the light which would eventually come into our world. This week's Saint of the Week is Our Lady and the Immaculate Conception. The Immaculate Conception is a holy day of obligation on the 8th of December and it relates to Mary's conception in the womb of her mother, who was Saint Anne. To become the mother of Christ, Mary was conceived free from the burden of original sin. This was all part of God's plan for Mary to be the mother of Christ. This week's call to action. During this season of Advent, how can you be a sign of hope to others? Could you write a letter to somebody in a retirement home? Could you promote a work of a local charity during this time? Or could you simply pray for a person that you know and your family? These signs of hope may be small, but they can mean a lot to that person that you engage with. Let us know how you get on with this week's call to action. Email us at livingyouth at downandconnor.org. Thank you all so much for joining us for our Advent episode of Parish Gift Shorts. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye bye. Thank you so much for joining us tonight during this Advent season. Take care and stay safe. Rejoice.